I'd came back and fetched us, to be quite honest. That honey guide that you're looking at in the tree there has just come from the south. Well, it was chased away by that hornbill first. And then it flew away and has now come back to fetch us. And I think what we're going to do is follow it. For those of you just joining the bushwalk, um, a few minutes ago we came up out of a drainage line looking for a different bird. And this bird all of a sudden grabbed our attention. This is a greater honey guide and has widely been known for thousands of years to have a relationship with people and honey badgers to show them where beehives are. Obviously we get to get the honey and the bird gets the leftover honeycombs and bee larvae. So what I want to do is just make sure that this bird knows that we're here and by doing that I walk straight at it. Now there he goes and in an exposed spot again at the top of the tree there. So it doesn't want to hide from us exposed spots at the top of the tree so what we're going to do is make sure that he knows we're there let's follow him again now obviously there's a folklore story that goes with this as well and part of it is if this bird shows me where the beehive is and I don't open the beehive or I don't leave him any honey he, the next time I follow a, a, a the next time he finds a beehive instead of leading me to the beehive he'll lead me to an angry leopard or an angry snake, that's as the folklore goes. So I'm just going to show it, there he goes, he's flown off south. He did see me. Okay. Let's carry on going, it might just get a bit, as we're walking, a little bit faster. Now of course the danger here is that while I'm looking at a bird in a tree, I'm not looking for the buffalo on the ground, so <laughs> just keeping my eyes open here. Okay, I can hear him there. Yes, little guy, we can hear you. There he's sitting. I'm going to show you, show you now. Once again, on an exposed stump. I'll try and silhouette him against the sky for you so that you can see him. Oh, he's flown away, but there he is in that tree over there. So, this closest silver cluster leaf yep. to us here. Got him? Up top, I don't see uh, it. He's just on the dead branch. When, if we go down here, he'll actually almost be silhouetted against the sky on the tree line. Let's go closer. Don't worry, we'll get you a bit closer. Come on. Yes, we can see you, little guy. There we go. All right, come here, Dave. You can see him now. Now, uh, there he goes over there. Come down a little bit, you'll see him silhouetted. Now, you will notice that there's a slight blur on the lens that we have here. It is a, a problem that we know about. It's a little bit of condensation on the inside of the camera, making it a little bit blurry at the moment. So please just um, excuse us for that. It's something that we just saw. And uh, we will get it rectified over the next, who knows, <laughs> when we get the camera in for a service. <laughs> but let's show. Alrighty, we're going to carry on with our... Let's just show him we can see you. We're going to carry on letting this honey guide lead us to wherever he's leading us. How exciting. And uh, we're going to send you over to James who's just found a water buck. After a quick power, we decided that we weren't going to leave this, uh, this um, honey guide without at least some prize. And against, against my better judgment... I suppose in terms of normal ways of guiding, I've decided I'm going to see if I can entice some termites to come to the surface. And hopefully this honey guy doesn't take it as an offense that he's now showed me the, 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 the bee's nest, which is exactly what he wants. And now I'm giving him a sort of second rate prize with some juicy termites. Okay, all the termites are coming. So what I've done is I've just created a bit of a disturbance. And as you can see, the termite soldiers are rushing toward that disturbance. And I'm hoping that this honey guide will actually see this from where he is and will come down here and feast on some termites as a consolation prize. <laughs> what is quite exciting is that bird is still sitting in the tree over there, but disgusted, has stopped calling absolutely completely. There he sits over there in the middle of the fork Basically, you can see it silhouetted against the sky there. Dave doesn't see it. Come down. Go in, zoom in, middle of the screen. 
There the bird is. There you go. There he is over there. Not making a not making a sound, not calling. Highly disgusted. <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna try my best to try and get some termites for it. So I'll use my skills at getting termites out to try and at least give this bird a little bit of dinner. So what I'm doing is I'm blowing into this termite mound. Most of the predators that prey on termites exhale carbon dioxide. And it's the carbon dioxide plus the scraping noises on these termite mounds that elicit such an aggressive response from the soldier termites in this termite mound. And you can see that right off the bat, they've actually just sent in all their biggest soldiers. Those are exactly the type of food that I would eat if I were out here in the bush. Very, very highly nutritious termites if you can just get past those jaws and I'm sure the honey, uh, the honey guard wouldn't have a problem considering they had to deal with bee stings these are but a minor annoyance now have a look at this now I'm just hoping that that honey guard can see this see, see here we go we, we, we're helping you come and have a look over here when we finish you have some dinner before you go <laughs> wow there's a lot of these adult soldiers these are immature soldiers, these small ones. That is the mature soldier. Now that soldier termite is five years old already. Can you believe it? That's how big they get. They live for a couple of years, five years. That's how big it is. Have a look at my thumb here in comparison to them, or I suppose my baby finger. I'm going to get too close. They bite like crazy. We're going to send you over. Taylor has got another bird to show you. Now, we are actually still with this greater honey guard. Can you believe it? We've probably covered about a mile or so since you were last with us. And this honey guard keeps on just taking us further and further south. Now, as we get further south, Herbert gets more and more skeptical. He says this bird's got a different agenda. The last time he was following one of these birds, it led him to an angry leopard. And he got chased around by this leopard. So he's viewing this honey guard with a lot of skepticism <laughs> He's hanging way at the back, looking under every bush, thinking I'm a bit crazy for just running after this bird. But I just want to keep and I want to keep with it and see what it's doing. There it is there. So it's just come back to fetch us. So you just follow the, the arc of the branch all the way to the to the left. Yep. And his have a look on the screen. Yet, sir. Now Aaron, you've um, you've just said you've just said you've just asked me is there a difference between a greater and a lesser honey guard? Um, there absolutely is, Aaron. The, the, the lesser honey guard is a bit smaller and has a different call. But essentially, they are, and they also have a slightly different distribution area. But Aaron, essentially, they do the same thing. They have this, they have a call that is basically pitched at us and at, our, at the way that we um, listen to sounds out here. It's something that's very recognizable. And between humans and honey badgers, we try and keep this bird full. Now it of course can hunt for its own food. It's not completely needing a human or a honey badger, but it just makes it so much easier for this bird if we had to do it. Now it's flown on from here of course, but I think this bird's going to come back. Let's carry on going down here and see where this bird leads us. Oh look, oh, there was a, another plated lizard, but it's disappeared into its termite burrow. I hear James was showing you a rough scaled plated lizard and this was exactly the same. Here it comes again. Yeah, here it's going to land on this dead tree, I think. No? Yes? I'm hearing it chittering. That bird that you're seeing at the top there, that's a drong, uh, uh, magpie shrike. There he goes. There's the honey guard. Just landed next to it on the left hand side. There he is. That's the greater honey guard chittering at us so let's follow him let's just make sure he knows that we are coming we're coming i can't wait to see what's at the end of this this honey guide's trail to be honest with you it could lead us into the middle of the kruger going for a couple of days you know how birds go there he flies off there let's just keep an eye on where he's going okay he's going into this thicket now of course this is just sort of playing into 
Herbert's doomsday prophecy that I'm going to walk myself into an angry leopard or, or a lion. Are we, we are going to walk into this thicket over here, and I, I don't really want to do that without being a little bit more careful. So we're going to send you over to James and his lion quickly, and we'll keep you updated about what's inside here. Do you think we have found something? I'm not quite sure what. This honey guide is leading us now in a circle. So keeps on coming back to this tree and then circling out this way and then bringing us back again and circling out and bringing back. I'm sure there's something here in this thicket. I'm positive now that it's not a male lion. <laughs> but I was a bit skeptical coming in here. I must be honest with you. All right, so yep. here we go. Sorry, our audio was gone for a second, and now it's back. You know, it's just one of these little gremlins that creep in here when we're giving you a live feed like this from the middle of absolutely nowhere. Now, let's see if this honey guide is going to come and fetch us from this tree again. And see, this, it's been quite an amazing journey. For the last 45 minutes or so, I think, we've been on a journey following a honey guide, a greater honey guide. It's a bird that's got a relationship with people whereby... It will show us where, or hopefully this is how the story goes anyway, it will show us where a beehive is and in return for us excavating the bees, it gets larvae, beeswax and the little bee larvae. Now, we've been led probably about two miles, I would say, as the crow flies from where we first found this honey guide, or where it first found us, I should say. And now we're busy circling this thicket. And I think there's something in here. There must be. He keeps on chittering about here, just around about here. And then when we get there, it flies off and comes back again. So I'm not wondering if we haven't got a bees hive here somewhere that I'm missing. It would be really, really awesome if we got to show you a bee hive after f following a honey guide. Let's see. Through here. Anywhere here could be a cavity in a tree where, where honey bees could have their nest. Now he's flitting around at eye level again. Now, Rue, you've asked a nice question and you're a new viewer. So firstly, Rue, I'd like to say welcome to Safari Live and onto the, uh, onto the game drive of your life, I should say. Um, Rue, you've asked why would the honey guide lead us to a leopard and not just to bees every time? Well, Rue, the... Um, the, the folklore around it is that if you don't leave enough honey for the honey guard, the first time he leads you to honey, he will lead you to a dangerous animal or a lion or a leopard or a snake the next time you decide to listen to his call. Um, and why leopard was because the last time Herbert, which is our game scout, that's what you're looking at here is a three-man team. It's myself and today we have Dave on the camera and then Herbert, which I'm going to show you in the background over there. That is Herbie right there. <laughs> Herbie. Herbie keeps us safe while we are talking to you and have our final control in our ears and everywhere. We can't really listen to the bush. And walking around here in the Kruger Park where we are is a very dangerous thing to do. So we just have Herbie with us. And Herbie, the last time Herbie was following a honey guard, the honey guard led him to an angry leopard which chased him out of a bush. And he doesn't quite know why. He says to me that he didn't... Uh, he, d he did leave honey the last time he, uh, he, uh, oh, look here, I'm tied up in a tree, he's bitten me. Herbie says that he left honey for the guide the first time he followed the honey guide, but obviously he didn't leave enough. Now this honey guide is still calling at us from this thicket. We're not going to be able to get Dave through there, but let's go around one more time. And see if we can find anything here. It's going to take us a bit of time to stick our noses into every tree cavity here, and I'm hoping we find something here for you. But in the meantime, we're going to send you over to James, who's sitting, James, who's sitting with those lovely Inkahumas. You're right, I have a surprise for you. I've got goosebumps. For the first time in almost a 20 year career, a honey guide has led us. Straight to a beehive. Have a look inside that tree. What you're having a look at there is a cavity full of honeybees. 
Isn't that amazing? Yes, please. <laughs> How awesome is that? Oh, I've got a smile that is just breaking my face at the moment. Herbie's been jumping up and down in joy. We've been giving each other hugs here in the bush like a bunch of teenagers. Now, <laughs> what do we do with this, with this newfound knowledge? Obviously, I'm not going to go and smoke out those bees and use my knife and hack open the tree and gather some honey and then leave this honey guard, some honey comb. Now the dilemma is, <laughs> do we now follow one of these again and he leads us then to an angry lion or an angry leopard or a snake in a tree because he's wasted the last hour and a bit of effort with us and now all we're going to do is say thank you very much, have a nice day and we're going to walk away. Um, which is of course what we're going to have to do but uh, you know, isn't that just the most amazing thing? So for, for those of you just joining us right now, we identified the call of a greater honey guide I'm going to actually try and see if I can show him to you. He's, he's at eye level now, sitting a bit closer to us. But I'll, I'll do it in a second. Greater honey guides a bird. These birds have an association with people and where they lead people to honey nests, to bees nests, to honey nests, to bees nests. And, uh, and in return, the people who love honey, obviously chop open the bees nests. And in that, let the honey and the comb and the bees larvae fall on the floor. And when we've had our fill... People depart and the honey guide comes down and then has its meal of beeswax and uh, bee larvae and honey, of course. Um, and they do that with people and they do that with honey badgers, where, where honey badgers get their names from. Honey badgers will also quite often follow this bird and this bird call. Now, a honey badger would have absolutely no problem sticking his face into that hole or into that hive. But for me, that, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that. But... For the first time in my entire guiding career, I followed a honey guide, taken the patience to listen to it, walked from tree to tree, realized that we were going around in circles. The call of the honey guide became a little bit more incessant when we got to this tree. And then we just came around this tree, looking with our binoculars. And right there, in the sunlight, we caught the, no the, the little moat of a bee streaking into the tree and when we came around the tree in this cavity is the honey or the bee's nest <laughs> i know all of you are saying we have to give the bird honey you know we're sitting over here with a, like i said a bit of a dilemma we have to give that bird honey we have to give it a treat i don't quite know what we're going to do here just yet because we don't want this bird to lead us to a lion or a leopard or a snake the next time we follow one of these birds. And because now, of course, we've gotten it right once, it means we have to get it right the next thousand times we try it, <laughs> little boys. But let, let's go on here. I want to see if I can show you this honey guide. We haven't seen it for a bit. He's still sitting in the tree over here, busy calling at us frantically. I'm going to try and get him into a view where we can actually show him to you without the sun disturbing it, because I think he also needs, in actual fact, he's the star of the show. He needs to be celebrated for what he is, the greater honey guide. Where are you sitting, little guy? Okay, he's in this tree. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see now. He's just going to come around. Of course, he's now going to take us on another circle. There he is. Come through. All right, we got him in the tree. He's not going to go away. He is sitting in the sun, perfect for us at the moment. Let's see if we can get him through this gap for you. All right. Now, of course, because I want to show you, he's going to fly away. Come this side, Dave. All right, now, he's in this tree, on this branch, basically... Uh, go to there sorry I'm just pointing at David's stick up a little bit there somewhere there is the honey guard uh, somewhere in the middle of your screen we're trying our best to try and see if I can actually see it in the screen for us it's just a massive red um, a massive red branches go right go up a little bit somewhere there Come on, little guy, go down a bit, somewhere in those sticks there. Let's see if we can change the angle a little bit. 
I'm going to show him to you. Don't worry. Without him now flying away and thinking that we missed the honey. Where are you sitting? He's probably in full view of us over here and I can't really see him at all. This is embarrassing, I must be honest with you. Come this side, let's see if we can just silhouette him against the tree there. And now what's going to happen is he's going to fly out when we get a bit closer. Oh, he was right in front of us. Here we go. Okay. Alrighty. There he sits on that cross branch at the top there. See on the left hand side, silhouetted against the sky? Okay, we're going to try and show him to you now. Okay, zoom in, go to the left. Sorry. Okay. In the bottom of your screen, now in the center of your screen. There we go, got him. Oh, sorry about that. There we go, got him. I know that took a little bit long. Sorry, everybody. It is a live show, as you all know. And sometimes these things do take a little bit of time for us to find. That is the Greater Honey Guide, the star of the show. Over a two-mile journey, many stops on the way, he finally showed us his honey, or the beehive, where he'd like to get a bite of honey. And unfortunately, we're going to be leaving him unsatisfied. Much to my dismay, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> 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 All of you are saying that I should run back to the DRC and grab some honey. With it being quite close to the road, actually, I might actually do that. Go fill up a bowl full of termites for this guy. And, uh, and, uh, and get, right. <laughs> we're going to decide, we're going to have a quick powwow here and decide what we're going to do to celebrate this honey guard. In the meantime, we're going to send you over to James and catch up with you later.